So today I want to show you how you can take any song and turn it into an Ableton Live set that you can perform anywhere. All you need for this is Ableton Live, a song that you want to create and a MIDI controller for you to play live. My name is Matt Flank, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to take the original song and write, take a notepad and write down everything we can hear, so every sound. I have pitched this uh, for copyright reasons, but that doesn't matter. Okay, so the first thing I hear is a plug. Then we have the vocals. I hear a piano. We're gonna skip ahead. Okay, so then we have the drums. And I hear a kick. Clap. We have the bass. Okay, so what I heard here is a reverse symbol and a reverse vocal. So we're gonna write that down reverse symbol, reverse vocal. Right here we have another bass, so I'm gonna just write that down, another bass. This one is more like an 808, so I'm gonna write 808 instead. So we have an 808, and we have a bass. Like here you can hear a pad in the background. It's just one note. No. Oh my god, I see you walking by. Take my hands, my D, and look me in. All right. So let's see if we can hear anything else. Oh my eye, the background eye, vocals. Right here we have a snap. So let's write that down as well. And a hi hat. Right there, the hi-hat changes pattern. So now we have everything written down that is in this song. We have the plug, we have the vocals, the background vocals, a piano, an 808, a bass, a reverse cymbal, reverse vocal, and a pad. And then for the drums, you have the kick, the clap, a snap, and a an hi-hat. So what I would do next is I would try and recreate as many sounds as possible. You can take samples if you can find original samples. If the song has some empty spaces that you can sample, you can also do that. But in case of the synthesizers, for this song I recreated everything using Serum. Obviously this is gonna take a lot of time, it took me some time as well to remake everything. But take your time, find out how you can remake the sounds. Uh, you can always ask me for help by going to my Instagram and sending me a message. So next up I would decide what kind of a live performance that I want to do. Do I want something where I just play every element one by one and uh, fade it in? Or do I want something where I just play one instrument and do maybe the vocals as well? So for example we could say I, I would play the plug and a piano and do the vocals live. You could do something completely different if you have a different song selected. So what I did in this, in this case is I used the markers in Ableton to uh, to label everything and to label all the regions of the songs. So we have the intro, the verse, the chorus, bridge, etc. And then I placed everything in these MIDI clips. So pre-recorded, as you can see. And then some of them I changed the color and the name to record and in green. So in this case, the green clips are the ones that I would play live. So I would start off by playing the plug live. Then I would switch to looping the plug and playing the piano live. Then the piano would start to play this pre-recorded thing. And while this is playing, I can play the drums live on my, on my MIDI controller. And the bass would just come in pre-recorded. So next up I have this bass that is uh, played live while the drums are pre-recorded. 
And the reason that I have these drums pre-recorded is because I already played drums. So if I switch to playing the bass live next, it is not going to sound weird if the drums all of a sudden appear. And then I have one final thing which I play live, which is this piano part. So now to control it. There is two ways you can really control this. One is by playing live with a loop station or using Ableton as a loop station by pressing buttons to trigger the new tracks and the new instruments by using MIDI mapping. Or the thing I did in this case is to use a MIDI control track. And this is a technique I found out about when I saw this video by Elise Trau, which is on your screen right now. She does this live looping with Ableton, but she doesn't press a single button and everything still works. So this technique is inspired by her. And for this, I used Loop MIDI. And it is a little program, I'm gonna download it right now, save the file. And what Loop MIDI is gonna do is it is going to allow you to create virtual MIDI tracks to, as I did, send MIDI signals without pressing any buttons on a MIDI keyboard. Okay, so now that we have Loop MIDI installed, you want to create two MIDI parts. I found that if you only use one, I get a stack overflow, so too much data and it crashes. So I use Loop MIDI part one. Then you want to create the MIDI control track, like this one, and set the input to no input, and set output to loop MIDI part and select channel 1. And then what I'm then going to do is, after I've decided which parts I'm going to record live and which are going to be pre-recorded, I'm going to select MIDI mappings. So let's open my MIDI mappings. And for example, you can see that in the beginning, it is going to trigger C sharp 2 and C2. And if you take a look, C sharp 2 is mapped to arm the piano and C2 is mapped to arm the mix to, to plug. So what this is going to do is whenever I press play, it is going to make sure that the plug track is armed. If I go to the intro, the end of the intro, right here I want to plug pre-recorded to start playing and I want the piano track to be armed so I can start playing the piano live. So if I get to the end of the intro, let's see. You can see the piano gets armed and this, this plug will start playing. You could hear the plug starting to play. And this will happen for every scene. So after you've done the mapping, and this is gonna take some work and some, some figuring out, then you can start implementing this live. So to implement this live, you want to set up follow actions for the control track. What follow actions are is when a clip is triggered, it will tell Ableton which clip to trigger next. So we're gonna go to the clip, press this little arrow and we get the follow actions. We're gonna turn this on and after it has played once, we want the next one. So I'm gonna play this and you can see when this is finished playing, it will play the next one automatically. And we want to do this for all the, all the clips. So let's select the intro, turn on follow actions, next. Intro, follow action, next. Follow action, next. Let's see if we can do this with multiple clips at one time. And there we go. So now if I start playing any of these clips, it will always play the next one whenever it has finished. So that way, when I start my live performance, I only have to trigger this one. It will make sure that the right track is armed and I can start playing live. But one thing you have to watch out for is that your MIDI keyboard is not mapped to the same MIDI track, because then when you're playing, you're gonna trigger all kinds of things. So as you could see, I started playing. I can play, but some of the keys on my MIDI keyboard are mapped so they will trigger the clips, and that is not what you want because that's gonna mess up the order of your live performance. So to solve that, you are going to go right into your Ableton MIDI settings, you're going to select the keyboard that you're going to play live on and then you are going to disable the remote. So right now I have remote disabled on my big piano and it is not going to trigger any clips. So let's first disable everything, start this track, it's going to count down, one, two, three, four. And you can see it now started looping the plug, but it's a pre-recorded one. So even if I mess up my playing in the recorded part, it's not gonna matter because it's pre-recorded. 
but it's still gonna sound like it's looped. And it armed the piano track, so now if I press my keyboard, you can hear it is playing a piano sound. And this is gonna go and continue for the entire song. And that is how I turn an entire song into a live loopable version. So let's quickly go back and summarize all the steps. So the first thing I did was find a song and write down all the instruments and sounds that I can hear. So for this song, it was the plug, vocals, background vocals, piano, 808, bass, reverse cymbal, pad, and then for the drums, we had a kick, clap, snap, and a hi-hat. So what I go do next is I'm gonna find as many of these sounds and remake them as close as possible. And once I have all the sounds remade, I'm gonna organize them into Ableton like this. I'm using markers to label all the parts of the song, and I'm gonna create clips to indicate which instrument starts playing when. After I've done that, I'm going to implement this into the Ableton Session View and choose which clips I want to play live and which ones are going to be pre-recorded or looped. You can also choose to loop it, but that is going to be more risky because if you play a wrong note or if you play anything wrong, it will be looped wrong the entire song. So after you've chosen what parts of the song to play live and you've labeled it, so for this song, I was going to play the plug live first then the piano, then the drums, and then the bass. And the rest of the song is basically gonna be pre-recorded, but I'm gonna sing live, so it's still not gonna feel like I am just playing something and doing nothing at all. Even though I am. <laughs> but it takes a lot of preparation, so it's not your, like you're not doing any work. So if you've done that, it is time to choose which method of looping you're gonna use. You can use a loop station or a loop live in Ableton by triggering keys or buttons on a MIDI controller, or you can do like me and use a control track with a program like Loop MIDI. Loop MIDI is gonna create a virtual MIDI track for me to trigger clips without having to touch any buttons. If you want to see this in action and done really well, you can go to this video by Elise Trau. She uses the same method that I showed you in this video. So then you're gonna do all the MIDI mappings, so all the clips will be triggered in the correct order. I can't show you this in detail because this is different for every single song. But if you have all the mapping set up and all the clips created, you want to set up follow actions, so you only have to press one play button and the entire song can be played live. Then there is some things to look out for. First one is that the audience is not hearing your metronome. This method is not possible without a metronome or a click track in your ear, so you're gonna have to have in-ear monitors or, a head or headphones and the audience is gonna listen to your song live on speakers without hearing the click track. And the second thing to watch out for is that your MIDI, MIDI controller is not triggering the clips. To fix that, if it is, you're gonna go to Ableton settings, you're gonna find your MIDI controller and go to the input and disable remote. That way it is not gonna trigger any clips when you are playing live. And that is how to take any song and turn it into an Ableton live session. This is not too difficult, but it will take some time to create a full song like this. But if you're into playing live, this is definitely something I would do and I have done this before. If you liked this tutorial and it was helpful, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more like this. If you have any ideas or questions, leave them in the comment section down below and I will get in touch with you. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt Flank, peace out.